All right. Hello, everyone. Again, welcome. Thank you so much for joining today. This is the Wonder Week webinar on pharmaceutical engineering. We'll get started in just a moment as everyone is entering. I'll go ahead and share my screen. All right. All right, again, welcome everyone to our Wonder Week webinar on pharmaceutical engineering. My name is Emily DeRosa. I'm a recruiting specialist in the graduate admissions office here in the College of Engineering at Northeastern. I am going to get started and cover a few admissions related slides before we dive into uh, the bulk of the program slides, who I will hand it over to Professor Ben Woolston in just a little bit. Um, I just want to point out to everyone that uh, we will host a Q&A session at the end of this webinar. So if you have questions that come up throughout, please feel free to use the Q&A feature. Um, I'll try to go ahead and answer some of those questions as we go, but I will save some of the more program-specific questions for the end of the webinar in the Q&A session. So if we don't get to your question right away, just stick around till the end. One slide I just want to cover quickly before we get started with the bulk of the presentation. just want to bring everyone's attention to our code of conduct slide. Um, please take a moment to read over this before we dive into our webinar. Um, basically, we seek to provide a supportive environment during these webinars, so please be cognizant of that. Um, students are expected to uh, respect the rights and privileges of other university and community members and the guests of this webinar. All right, and I'll go ahead and get started. So we like to start out with just some facts about Northeastern as a whole. Uh, we are ranked a top 44 R1 research and experiential learning university. We are also ranked number one in co-op. I will dive in a little more specifically about co-op in just a couple slides. Definitely something that we're really proud of here at Northeastern and that makes us uh, stand out amongst other universities. Um, we have a total of nine colleges and schools uh, within uh, the university. Of course, we'll be highlighting College of Engineering today. Uh, and in total, over 40,000 students. We have degrees all the way up to the doctorate level, um, 230 million external research awards, and um, we are located in Boston, Massachusetts, our main campus, but we also do have a global campus network, and I will dive into that in just a minute. <laughs> As you can see here on this map, we do have campuses throughout the U.S. and some abroad as well. Um, each one of those campuses focusing on education, research, and experiential learning. Um, you can see here on this map, the newest of these campuses is our Miami campus, which will be launching fall of 2023. A little more specifics on College of Engineering. Our student body uh, for fall 2022, we were just over 10,000 students. Um, within College of Engineering, we offer master's, bachelor's, and PhD programs. Um, and you can see here some of our undergraduate numbers as opposed to graduate. So within the graduate school, just over uh, 6,200. Um, in total, throughout the College of Engineering, we have 102 academic degrees, certificates, and minors, um, over 300 full-time faculty, and in research, over $92.5 million in external research awards, and that was for fall 2022. We are also ranked the top 33 engineering graduate school. All right, and here you can see our six departments that we have within the Graduate School of Engineering. We have our disciplinary departments, bioengineering, chemical engineering, mechanical and industrial engineering, civil and environmental engineering, electrical and computer engineering, 
And then our sixth department is our multidisciplinary graduate education department. And that is where some of the IT areas fall into and other programs as well. A little bit more information here on this slide about our faculty. We have over 215 um, tenured faculty, over 115 young investigator awards throughout the department in our faculty, over 95 professional society fellowships and three NAE memberships. And again, here, a little bit more of a breakdown of our academic programs. You can see uh, broken out here our global campus network and what engineering programs are offered on each campus and just how many degrees, minors, and certificates that we do offer. This slide here highlights some of our newer facilities that we have on the Boston campus. The picture to the left is our new ISEC building. Um, a lot of labs and engineering classes do take place here and they are building an identical one right next door. So uh, we're continuing to expand globally and even here on our main Boston campus with state-of-the-art facilities. We are an R1 research institution, as I mentioned earlier, over $92.5 million in external awards. Um, we have 18 multidisciplinary research centers and institutes within the college. Um, and research really does drive a lot of what we do here um, at Northeastern and specifically within the College of Engineering. And here is a little bit more of a breakdown of those 18 research centers and institutes. And this slide here just highlights our College of Engineering mission. Um, as an academic institution, our main product is people. Our success is based on the quantity and quality of the people we produce. We produce transformative engineers, both students and faculty, with a global impact. Um, and I think this mission really does drive home you know, exactly what Northeastern represents and specifically the College of Engineering. And now I will give a brief overview on our co-op program. Like I mentioned earlier, we are ranked number one college for co-op in the US. Um, with this co-op program, students gain real world experience as part of the academic curriculum. Um, undergrad and grad students can both participate in co-op. Um, this is something that is not guaranteed, but students can apply for. After taking 16 credits, uh, students are eligible to apply for a co-op at a company that interests them in the field that they're studying. Um, a co-op course is required before applying for this, where you focus on resume building. Um, and again, this is a great opportunity to network, build your resume, and get hands-on experience in the field of your choice. Um, characteristics that define a co-op, um, the job function aligns with your major, what you're focusing and studying on. Um, it's a full-time opportunity, so this is, you know, aside from your coursework, and there's lengths in either four, six, or eight months that you can choose to participate in, and it varies by co-op. Um, industry is flexible, these are paid experiences, and it's also recorded on your transcript. Uh, benefits of a, of a cooperative education, as I mentioned, um, they really do advance your skill set and help you explore your interests. Is this really what you, you know, want to be doing post graduation? Um, you're learning firsthand in your chosen field. Um, the salary can range from eighteen to forty one dollars per hour, um, and it does help you grow personally and professionally while building your resume as a graduate student. This is a little uh, diagram about the co-op timeline. You could see those four, six, or eight month options um, and the timeline of which you would participate in those. And then you're also assigned a co-op advisor or um, a co-op coordinator. This person is aside from your academic advisor who solely helps you focus on applying for these co-op opportunities, preparing for them and um, helping to advise you as you go throughout the process. All right, so that concludes my overview. Um, I will be back at the end of the presentation for a couple more admissions related slides, but at this time I do want to hand it over to Professor Ben Woolston, who will dive into our Master's in Pharmaceutical Engineering program. Thanks so much for joining us today.
Great. Hello, everyone. Uh, nice to see you all here. Uh, so as Emily said, I'm Professor Woolston. Um, uh, I helped develop the new uh, MS program in pharmaceutical engineering. And if any of you do apply to this program and join us in the fall, uh, you'll actually see me in one of the first uh, chemical engineering core courses that's part of this program. So uh, it's nice to get a chance to, to meet you a little bit early here. So what I want to do today is just kind of go through the program, explain where it came from, what its goals are, and give you a little bit of the, the overview of what you would be doing uh, if you were to join this program. So first, what is the program? Well, we realized there's a growing need for engineers with skills in state-of-the-art pharmaceutical design, manufacturing, and regulatory aspects. Uh, in other words, we have a lot of great uh, engineers coming out with chemical engineering background, um, but maybe don't have the background they need to succeed in the pharmaceutical uh, area. They need a bit more biology, need to understand a bit more about how pharmaceuticals are developed. Uh, and so this master's is basically a way to, um, to, to close that gap, right? Um, uh, same thing from the other side. Maybe you have bachelor's training in pharmaceutical sciences and realize that actually what you really want to be doing is, is engineering. Maybe you want to be involved in uh, cell culture development or downstream separation. Um, you could come into this program and we'll teach you the chemical engineering background that you would need to uh, you know, size those unit operations and, and work in, in that area. And so uh, this program, I think, is, is really neat. It's brand new, as we said. We're launching our first time in, in fall 2023. Um, and what makes it unique is it's a, a collaboration between two departments, actually in two different colleges. So um, chemical engineering here represents uh, the College of Engineering. It was also collaborated on by pharmaceutical sciences uh, over in the Bouvet uh, College of, of, of Health. And so I think this is a really great option for students to benefit from faculty um, in a wider range of areas than perhaps you typically would in a, in a degree program like this and the various industrial connections that we have um, uh, as, for, uh, as Emily says, for your, for your co-op and, and beyond. Uh, next slide. Um, so a little bit more about the program and how it's broken down. Uh, it's a highly interdisciplinary program um, that's going to help prepare you for a range of different careers. Right? So you can see um, in kind of the, uh, the the panels to the right, the green ones are kind of technical uh, areas that you would get uh, hands-on and classroom instruction in. Right. So things like uh, drug delivery, um, how you commercialize research, intellectual property, all these things that are really important in the pharmaceutical space. Um, but then in blue are kind of what we think of as soft skills. These are no less important. Um, uh, and the curriculum is designed to give you these as well. So developing leadership skills by working in groups in a, a capstone lab project, right? Um, management skills, learning how to, to work with other people, communication skills, we'll give presentations, reports. Um, these are all uh, aspects of the courses we're developing as well as the experiential components uh, to get you those soft skills that you need to succeed. Uh, next slide. Okay, so who might this program be designed for? Um, we really see uh, three uh, main types of students that we think would benefit from this. Um, but if, if, if you don't fall into these categories but are still interested, you know, uh, that's definitely a great question for the Q&A section later. Um, so perhaps you've got an engineering background and you're looking to get into the pharmaceutical sector. Um, maybe you don't even come from chemical engineering. Maybe you come from electrical engineering or another branch of engineering uh, and want to refocus on the pharmaceutical sector. This program could be great for you. Um, Maybe you're a scientist, so maybe you've been trained in pharmaceutical sciences uh, and are getting more interested in the engineering side of these things, right? How to do fermentation, downstream from, uh, purification. Um, those scientific skills you have will be really useful. And uh, the way we've designed this curriculum is even if you don't have an engineering background, um, uh, there's a track where we can teach you what you need um, uh, to, to get through this. Um, and then maybe you're already in the pharmaceutical uh, sector, but you've realized um, there's more kind of fundamental coursework you need to, uh, to get to that next level in your career. So this is who we think that the program is really uh, targeted towards. Next slide. Great. So uh, the next few slides will just kind of break down the overall structure of the, the, the program in terms of the specific courses. So as with most of our MS courses, it's 32 credits, um, or units rather. And this is designed to be taken over a 1.5 to two year um, uh, timeline, uh, if you're, if you're full-time that is. Um, and it consists, it's broken down into core courses and elective courses. Um, the core has components from chemical engineering and pharmaceutical sciences. 
uh, and that will include both kind of theory, more theoretical work, as well as experiential components, labs, uh, project-based work, that kind of thing. Um, and that's so that, that core is what everybody will take. Then in your electives, this is where you have more flexibility to tailor the degree to the exact interests that you have. Um, so everybody will have to take some courses in regulatory because this is critically important in development of pharmaceuticals. Um, quality and statistics, so that could be quality assurance, quality control. Um, uh, and so those are, you know, with, within those, there's some flexibility to, to go different directions you want. When you really get the chance to specialize is what we call these depth electives. So this is a, a you'll see in the next couple slides, um, a wide range of courses are on offer to basically allow you to specialize in an area of pharmaceutical engineering or sciences that you find particularly interesting. Right? So you really can tailor this degree to, to what you're looking for. Uh, also really important to note that although um, the, uh, I think a lot of folks will take this program full time in, in the year and a half to two year time period, you can absolutely take this program part time. So if you're still working, uh, or, or for other reasons, want to do this a little bit slower, that is totally an option that is on the table. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so Emily has already done, a, I think, a much better uh, job of explaining the co-op than, than I will here. But so really all I want to add at this point is to highlight a few um, pharmaceutical companies that we have worked directly with in the past to, uh, to land students uh, co-ops with. Um, so these are you know, companies, obviously, many of these you'll probably know if you're interested in the pharmaceutical uh, area, um, places like Pfizer, uh, Moderna, who we can largely thank for the COVID-19 vaccines. Um, these are all companies that uh, we envisage that students will be able to co-op with um, uh, as, as part of this program. Next slide. Um, so we'll just um, kind of here just uh, whiz through the, uh, the, the curriculum. Uh, so the core courses you'll see, as I mentioned, these are divided between chemical engineering, so that's CHME over here, and pharmaceutical sciences, PHSC. Um, uh, pharmaceutical engineering one and two, that's the course that if you, and those are the courses that if you do join, um, I'll be teaching you, at least for the first year. Uh, we have a laboratory course in both of these, right? So the chemical engineering uh, lab will be more focused on kind of uh, scale up of uh, fermentation and purification, those kind of things. The pharmaceutical sciences laboratory will be focused more on kind of um, basic techniques, uh, cell culture, working with uh, aseptically, doing assays and ELISAs and, and those types of things. And so those credits are basically evenly split between um, chemical engineering and pharmaceutical science. Uh, next slide. So just to give you a, a little bit more information on those pharmaceutical engineering courses, as, as I mentioned, these are the ones I'm teaching. So I, I, I thought it would be a good uh, opportunity to, to kind of uh, do a bit of a deeper dive into the types of things you might be learning here. And the key thing I want to highlight through all of this uh, is that what we're going to be doing is teaching you the core principles of chemical engineering, but entirely in the context of biopharmaceuticals. Right? And so this is how it works. This is this is why we can offer this both to chemical engineers and to people that don't have that background um, is because even if you do have a chemical engineering background, you're going to be learning how to apply the skills you remember from undergrad or maybe forgot a little bit from undergrad um, to entirely new problems right? in, in biopharmaceutics. Um, and if you don't have an engineering background, we're going to include that in these courses. Right? So just as a couple of examples, um, uh, Major areas within chemical engineering, uh, kinetics, um, undergrads take a whole class in that, and heat transfer. But instead of applying these to standard unit operations from the chemical in industry, we're going to learn these entirely in the context of biopharmaceutical applications. So when we talk about kinetics, we'll be talking about how enzymes work, right? how they bind to their substrates, and those kind of things, how cells grow, and how we can mathematically predict how quickly um, they'll get to a certain uh, uh, density in, in the culture. When we talk about heat transfer, we'll talk about how to make sure you're managing heat in a bioreactor correctly, um, how to sterilize your media so that only your cells and not uh, contaminating microbes grow, these types of things. Uh, next slide. Oh, uh, one more forward, thank you. Um, same thing, when we get to uh, mass transfer and fluid flow, again, uh, really important uh, engineering uh, fundamentals we'll be learning about this entirely in the context of biopharma, right? So we'll talk about how to maintain oxygen levels in fermenters. Um, we'll talk about how continuous centrifugation works to start to purify your material from your cells. Next slide. 
uh, and thermo, right? Thermodynamics is critical in uh, uh, in chemical engineering. Any undergraduate in chemical engineering, when they think thermodynamics, they probably think about steam tables. If you've had those courses, uh, you probably remember them from from years ago. We're not going to talk about that. We're going to we're going to learn thermodynamics entirely in terms of um, protein purification. So you'll learn how protein crystallization works, how uh, column chromatography works. Right? So again, these might be principles that as a chemical engineer you're familiar with, but we're going to take these in entirely new directions, which means that if you're not a chemical engineer, that's okay because it's new to everyone. Right? So this program really does work whether you have a, an engineering background or not. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so again, I, I've, I've made this point several times, but I think it's a really important one, so I'll, I'll hammer it home here. We don't assume that you have a prior engineering background. In fact, we're looking for students that want to, to learn that. All we ask uh, is that you have a strong math background. You really can't do uh, engineering without maths. So if you've got differential equations and you're happy with differential equations, that's good enough for us, right? That's that's the only kind of engineering math background that we really think you need before joining this program. Um, the emphasis through all these courses is on quantitative understanding of the fundamentals so that you can do problem solving and designing, right? Uh, and so the problem sets and exams and things that you'll have in these courses are all going to be about problem solving and designing based on the, the techniques you've, you've learned. Um, finally, uh, I think it's really important that you know, the modern world relies on computing. Uh, and so our graduates need to know how to interface with computers. Right? So a lot of the uh, techniques we'll teach you in these courses um, for solving equations and these kind of things um, will be done through computer programming. So we'll actually teach you how to code in, in Python um, and apply that to the, the problems that you're working on. Uh, this is this was sort of a broad transferable skill that I think is important beyond um, just the engineering. Uh, next slide. Um, we'll also have a, a brand new lab course. Um, so I think this will be really exciting for many of you. Uh, this will be a team project-based hands-on course to give you experience in experimental design and operation in upstream and downstream. Um, so you'll actually get to run fermenters. You'll actually get to grow cells and make uh, protein, make therapeutic protein right? uh, in our state-of-the-art lab facility. Uh, then you'll learn once you've got the protein in the downstream side of things, how to actually purify that, right? So you'll actually run uh, columns and purified protein and get your, your active ingredient would be the end of this. So um, I think this is a really unique opportunity. Not a lot of places offer a lab course like this, um, as this would be a great way for you to kind of apply the theoretical background that you're getting in the earlier courses uh, in, in a more hands-on experiential type of a way. Next slide. Uh, we'll just breeze through quickly here um, the different elective courses. So remember, there were three groups of elective courses. The first was regulatory. And so as you can see, although we're saying you have to take a regulatory course, you have a lot of options in terms of what you actually want to do, whether that's biotherapeutic approvals, whether it's an introduction to the, the, the FDA processes. Right? You can kind of tailor this how you like. You take one of these courses. Uh, next slide. Yep. Um, same thing with quality and statistics. Again, these can range from biostatistics to design of ethical research, right, depending on your interests. Next slide. And finally, depth. So as I mentioned, we said this was a really broad category, and that's because we're giving you the flexibility to, um, to specialize in an area that's of interest to you. So out of this large list of classes, which is actually growing as we speak, um, you just have to take an additional seven units, so roughly two of these courses. Um, and so these, again, you can tailor these depending on your interests. Maybe you want to go into the analytical side of things, and so you want to do, take a course in mass spectrometry and drug development, right? Maybe you're more interested in biomaterials, right? That side of the pharmaceutical sector. We have, uh, a, you can see here, several courses uh, related to, to biomaterials. So it really gives you the flexibility to tailor your degree um, to your next steps. Next slide. Um, so just a, a few numbers about the, the job market. Obviously, if you're, you're looking for a higher degree, you've, you've got to have this in, in mind. Um, so I, I think you know, Boston is a particularly excellent area um, to, be, uh, to be pursuing a degree like this. Um, basically, half of the pharma industry in the US is located in Boston, with the other half being located in, in the, the San Francisco area. Um, so some numbers to back that up. In the first half of 2020, 
Um, the massive biopharma industry raised $2.1 billion in venture capital. So this is a, a growth, uh, injury, uh, growth industry, um, currently supporting about 300,000 jobs in Massachusetts. That number is growing. Um, salaries, these should be uh, things you're thinking about for sure. Um, median salary for chemical engineers and pharmaceuticals were around 100,000. Um, so I mean about 107. So this is a well-paying industry as well, if you have the right skills to um, to, to, to join, which this program is, is going to give you. And as mentioned, you know, Massachusetts is really one of the strongest um, markets for, for careers in pharmaceuticals, especially biopharmaceuticals. So uh, I think, you know, being on the ground in, in Boston, taking these courses, doing co-ops often in companies that are also based in Boston will set you up really well um, for a career in this industry. Next slide. Um, yeah, so applications for fall 2023 are still open. Uh, we're nearing the end of the cycle, but we're, we're still uh, still accepting applications. So if any of this has interested you, please, um, you can see the link there. Um, send an application. We'll be delighted to review it uh, and hopefully welcome you in the fall. All right, and so I think uh, that's it from me. I'll, I'll stick around till the end in case you have any questions. Uh, but in the meantime, we'll hand it back to Emily. Thank you so much, Professor Woolston. Um, I will dive quickly back into just a couple more admissions related slides. Um, please, at this time, um, if you've thought of questions that you'd like to ask about the specific um, program, about any of the slides that Professor Woolston covered, um, please feel free to enter them into the Q&A at this time. I'll breeze through these slides and then we'll get your questions answered um, at the end. Uh, one thing that I do want to highlight is that here in the Graduate School of Engineering, we do have a graduate ambassador program. Um, as the MS in pharmaceutical engineering is so new, we don't just quite yet have an ambassador for this program. Um, but something to keep in mind, um, we do have many ways to contact our graduate ambassadors. And even if you have questions about moving to Boston, starting at Northeastern, although we don't yet have a specific ambassador for this program, you can reach out to any of our ambassadors to you know, ask those questions. They've been through this before um, as well. And a great opportunity as well. If you are an accepted student, you could be one of the first graduate ambassadors uh, for this program. So something to, something to consider. Um, again, questions that ambassadors can help with um, more program specific student experience um, about coursework, work life balance, um, co op, things like that. Um, if you do have questions about the admissions process or your specific application, um, you can reach out to any of us in the admissions department. I'll share our email address at the end. Um, anything about your specific application, if you're joining us from internationally, your I 20 or visa status. Um, we can certainly help with that in admissions, but ambassadors are our current students who've been through this process before, so they're happy to help with any questions that they can. Um, again, here, this is a great QR code to scan. Um, we have a YouTube channel where we have panels talking to our current students. Um, videos like this are always recorded and posted to our YouTube channel and many different ways that you can contact our student ambassadors as well. So highly recommend scanning this QR code, uh, taking a screenshot of this page. Um, I think that our ambassadors are some of the best resources that we have within the graduate school here. Um, here on campus at Northeastern, we have ways for students to get involved outside the classroom. Um, listed here are just a couple of the opportunities that we have, um, different organizations and societies that students can join as engineering students to get to know uh, fellow classmates, whether it's in their program or outside of their program in a different department, um, a great way to network and a great way to become more involved in the community here at Northeastern. Um, we have, you know, many opportunities for student support here at Northeastern. Um, we, like I mentioned earlier, have our co-op coordinators. So if co-op is something that you're highly considering, these are great resources to help you with any aspect of the co-op program from, you know, just getting started uh, to seeing what options are out there for you to, you know, questions that you have during your experience if you do choose to pursue a co-op. Um, again, we have many students who join us from internationally, so we do have our Office of Global Support, and that is for CPT advising. 
Um, student services in general, everyone will be assigned an academic advisor. So if you have questions about course registration or anything, uh, once you become a student, your um, academic advisors and student services are happy to help with those questions. Um, we have a global student success office for international students that can help with things like tutors, uh, specific workshops and webinars. And we also have a Department of Career Design and Employer Engagement. Um, they organize things like career fairs, different workshops to prepare you for after graduating uh, from your graduate program here at Northeastern. Um, for those of you who are in attendance today who are accepted students, congratulations. For those of you who might still be awaiting a decision or for those of you who haven't applied yet, I do want to cover a couple points uh, for everybody who may be on this webinar. Uh, so this little roadmap right here is for our accepted students who may be joining us today. Um, again, this is another great slide to take a screenshot of um, super helpful information listed here. It gives a little bit of a pathway on um, what steps you'll take after receiving an acceptance. Um, so after receiving an acceptance letter, you'll uh, kind of go through the portal and uh, complete different tasks as they come up as you get closer to starting in the fall. Um, for our international students applying for I-20s is very time sensitive, so we recommend getting that process started as soon as possible. Um, you'll consider things like housing and getting ready for your move. Um, checking in with OGS, uh, and then a little bit later down the line will be things like course registration, uh, paying tuition and fees, um, and finishing all of the technical stuff before getting ready to start the program. Uh, so any questions, of course, about this timeline, we'll continue to communicate via email, but absolutely feel free to reach out to us in admissions, and we're happy to guide you through any part of this process. Um, and again, congratulations to anyone who may be an accepted student here today. For our prospective students, if you are still considering applying, uh, we welcome you to do so. As Professor Wollston mentioned, we are still accepting applications for fall of 2023. Our deadline for international students outside of the U.S. is June 1st. And for any domestic students or international students that are currently residing in the United States, that deadline is August 1st. Um, of course, we recommend submitting the application as soon as possible, but we do want to go ahead and make you aware of these deadlines for fall of 2023. And again, just a little overview about admissions requirements. Uh, typically, we do require an application fee of $75. Uh, for those of you joining today, we're happy to provide a fee waiver code that you can see here. Um, again, I'll end to the end of this webinar. Um, that is my initials, ED. And you apply 2023, you can enter that at the time of application to waive that $75 application fee. Uh, we do require two letters of recommendation on official transcripts at the time you apply, and we'll require official transcripts a little bit later down the line. Um, statement of purpose, a resume. Um, as you can see here, the GRE is crossed out. We have waived that requirement at least through fall 2023. Um, definitely check back regarding uh, terms after that. Uh, you know, we have had this requirement waived for quite some time, but we'll continue to update on our website about uh, the future of this requirement. But for the time being, GRE is waived, not required. Um, and again, for students joining us internationally, um, we do have a list of countries that are waived from an English proficiency requirement, but typically for our international students, we do require either the IELTS, TOEFL, or Duolingo English proficiency test. And again, uh, just some important links and email addresses to keep in touch. We have our graduate admissions email here, the, excuse me, the email for our student ambassadors and some of our website links um, that can be helpful for any questions that you might have after today's webinar. And now we're happy to uh, take any questions, go through that Q&A. I will go ahead and uh, read the questions aloud. Let me go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Apologize, computer's being very slow. <laughs> there we go. 
All right, so I see we do have a couple of questions here in our Q&A. Uh, thanks so much for submitting those. I'll go ahead and get started with the first one here. Uh, would an undergraduate degree in chemistry be sufficient for admissions? Um, is there a prediction for the acceptance rate of the program or potentially uh, the most important parts of the application? Um, I'm happy to take the latter part of that question, but as far as the background in chemistry, I will defer to Professor Woolston. Sure. Um, so yeah, chemistry uh, would be a great background for, for this. Um, uh, I think, you know, it's it's important to, to highlight when you submit your application um, what your math background looks like, because some chemistry programs um, are very quantitative, right? You might have a lot of physical chemistry, those kind of things. Uh, and that's good for us to know to kind of see, do you have that differential equations background that, that you that, that you need? Um, so I would say, yes, chemistry, absolutely fine. Um, but just help help us um, work out if you have the math, right? So your your statement is a great place for that. I'm just sort of highlighting things on the, the transcript. Um, uh, in terms of the most important part of the application, I'll, I'll just take the part about research. Um, um, which is to say that this is not a research program, right? It's, it's a it's a coursework and experiential based masters. So, um, you know, we, we would we would never say that that research is is a, is a bad thing, right? But uh, perhaps um, compared to a PhD program, we're not going to be evaluating research experiences as heavily as we would uh, in in that case. So, I think if you don't have research, I don't think that's necessarily a problem for for this program specifically. Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much. And yeah, to reiterate that point, no previous research experience is required for application. Um, regarding kind of the nitty gritty of the application GPA, um, we're looking for a 3.0 or above, but we don't have any hard cutoffs. Um, so, you know, we encourage, uh, you know, the previous math experience, like Professor Wollston mentioned earlier, um, but no specific research uh, experience is required. And if you have any uh, questions about your particular or personal application, um, again, emailing us in admissions, we're happy to take a deep dive and look at your specific file to answer any questions you may have in more detail. Uh, next question up, is there a program uh, for a stepping stone to PhD despite not having research, um, a research component, or is there a possibility of joining a PhD program after completing this master's program? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, it's also a bit of a tough question to answer, especially because this is the first time we're really offering the, the program, right? So, um, you know, as you mentioned, it is not a research program, right? So you, you would not be likely to do any research as part of the masters um, and that is something that you know, so I also sit on the admissions committee for the, the PhD program we do look very strongly at research experience right so um, uh, so you know you, you may be sort of missing out a little bit on 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 that part of things for the the PhD program but on the other hand you know if you were here you would at least get interaction with the faculty we would get to meet you um, uh, and, and that can also be important in thinking about kind of opportunities for the PhD program as well. So I'm afraid it's not a very specific answer that's about as, as, as specific as I, as I can be at this point. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I see a couple questions in the Q&A about um, I-20s and scholarships, um, also about specific um, admissions decisions. Um, while we don't unfortunately have the time during this webinar to dive into particular files, I've entered our COE admissions email address in the chat um, with any questions regarding your personal application, I-20s, anything like that. Just go ahead and shoot us an email uh, to the address that I provided there. That way, like I said, we can take a deep dive into your file, make sure we get you the most personalized response um, and make sure you're all set to move forward there. Um, again, I've posted that in the chat section as opposed to the Q&A, um, but that is the best email address to contact us here in the grad admissions office. Um, last questions here. Again, um, more program specific question. Is the degree thesis based? Also, um, this program is made by two colleges in Northeastern, can you please tell me more about the lab opportunities um, and whether they fall under College of Engineering or Bouvet College of Health Science? Sure, thanks Thanks for your question, Ava. It's, it's a good question. Um, so the degree itself is not thesis-based, right? So it's, it's uh, primarily coursework and experiential learning. Um, 
you can, I, I think, do um, some research as, uh, as part of your depth elective. Uh, and that could be in a lab either in chemical engineering or in pharmaceutical sciences. It would depend on you finding uh, a faculty member to work with that had a, an opportunity available. So it, it could be both. Um, but, you know, again, just do want to reiterate that this is primarily not a research driven uh, program. Um, uh, it is it's primarily courses and the, the, the co-op and experiential uh, components. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, that is the last question uh, in the Q&A section. If there's any others before we end the session for today, please feel free to enter those in. Um, yep. If you have not received an answer to your specific emails um, thus far, just please send us another email. And again, we appreciate your patience during this busy time. Um, we are, you know, right kind of in the middle to end of the application cycle. So we appreciate your patience and uh, we'll get to your question as soon as possible. Um, one more thing I do wanna go ahead and enter in the chat before we say goodbye today is again, that application fee waiver code. Um, if you haven't yet applied, please feel free to enter this code to waive that $75 application fee. Any other questions before we end the session for today? All right. Well, again, thank you so much, Professor Wilson, for joining and diving into the MS in pharmaceutical engineering. Um, this session will be recorded, posted to our YouTube channel. And if any questions come up after today, please feel free to send us an email. If you have more program-specific based questions, we'll be sure to get your emails to uh, the right people to get those answered for you. Um, and I thank you all so much for taking time out of your day to join. Thanks again, Professor Wilson. Yeah, thank you, Emily. This was great. It's nice to see everyone and, and please get your applications in. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful right. rest of your day, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.